Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good evening, everyone. It is Monday, September the 11th, 2023. It is currently 6.46 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the Theology Central studio located right here in Abilene, Texas. Well, earlier today, I had to get in my car and I had to drive to the Abilene Airport. Abilene, what is it called? I don't even know what it's called. The Abilene Airport. Is it is it the Abilene Regional Airport? I don't know what it's called. It's the Abilene Airport. If you've ever been to Abilene, Texas, just go drive to our airport. Just if you ever come to Abilene, Texas, just drive to the airport. Say, where's the airport? Go to the airport. And you'll just, you're just going to drive in. You'll kind of just go around and you'll be like, wait, that that's the airport? Yeah, that's the airport. It's not really much to see, but you can at least go there and see. Oh, the great thing about the Abilene Airport, <laughs> this is, I love this. I love this. Wait, right there on the door of the airport, it's a sliding door, right? You get ready to walk up and there's a sliding door and it says, warning or beware of possible rattlesnakes <laughs> inside the airport. There is literally a sign warning you of possible rattlesnakes Inside the airport. Isn't that awesome? I, I, I love when people come from a different state and they're like, wait, what? There's possible rattlesnakes in the airport? Yes. Welcome to Texas. We're not scared. Okay, right now. Well, yeah, we, actually we are because I can't stand rattlesnakes. But, but I digress. So I went to the Abilene Airport. Is it called the Abilene Regional Airport? I think it is. I don't even know. I never even really thought. I just like the airport. We just call it the airport, right? But the Abilene Airport. So I went, I pulled in. It's not like there's never really any cars. There's never really anyone there. In fact, you can walk into the airport sometimes and you can't find anyone. You can't find anyone working there. You can't find anyone flying in or out. It's like a ghost town, right? So, okay, but I digress. So I, I pull up. The people who I was dropping off the airport, they get out. I pop the trunk, get their luggage. Okay, goodbye, goodbye, good, good, good. They get, they go in, and then I take off driving. And as I'm driving back, as I leave the Abilene Airport, I get down to the overpass. I'm, I'm underneath it. I come under the underpass. I take a left. There's the West Texas Fair and Rodeo uh, area where the fair is going on and the rodeo is going on. And tragically, someone died in, at the rodeo the other night. It was a horrible situation. And that's where the West Texas Fair is going on. So I drive past that. I'm like, well, okay, we were there. And that whole situation was, uh, yeah, there. Well, I could talk about that. And then I get finally, I go a little ways. And then it's kind of like it's an access road. And then there's an, an on ramp. And I get on the on ramp and I'm on the highway. And I'm just driving along, you know, just driving, thinking, talking to myself, whatever I'm doing. And I look over and I see a sign, a billboard. I see a billboard. And it says something along these li lines. Don't live life alone. Don't live life alone. And I'm like, oh, okay. They, I wonder who's telling me I should not live my life alone. And I wonder if they have a solution and how not to live my life alone. How should I live? What do I do not to live my life alone? What do I find? Oh, is it for Facebook or where I can have Facebook friends? Is it for a dating app? Maybe I, maybe it's for, maybe it's a, a social club that I could go and meet people and make friends. Maybe it's a bowling league. League, a baseball league. I wonder what it could be. And then I realized it's a billboard for a church. They want me to come to their church where I don't have to live my life alone. And immediately I started thinking about church marketing. Church marketing. Now, I'm just going to kind of introduce this concept, kind of throw it out there. I, I, and I, and I'm going to ask you to participate. Now, I know that's always a dangerous thing because see, I set myself up. I'm like, all right, this is a great idea. Everyone go look, participate and report back to me. And then a lot of times it's weird when I don't ask anything, I'll get email after email after email. As soon as I'm like, Hey, everyone, let's participate. People are like, nope. He asked me to do something. I refuse to do what he, if he doesn't ask me, I'll do it. If he asks me, I'm just going to say no out, uh, on principle. Could you please this time just go against your principles and, and contact me and participate? Okay. All right. But here we go. I'm going to do this really quick. I'm going to look up the definition of marketing. Marketing is defined as this, the activity 
or business of promoting and selling products or services. And a roundabout way, churches do that. They advertise, right? And they advertise their product. They advertise their service because there, it's not like when churches promote themselves, they're not promoting Jesus. They will tell you, well, I'm doing this so that people will come and hear about Jesus. But your marketing campaign is trying to convince people to come to your church. You don't say, hey, you don't market your church. You don't spend a thousand dollars in advertising to say, hey, go find a church anywhere and learn about Jesus. No, you spend thousands of dollars trying to get people to come to your particular church. Your or to tune into your particular ministry. If I do ad, if I was to pay for advertising for the Theology Central podcast, it would be like tune in where we try to make theology central to every part of your life. We are going to promote us. So already you can start thinking about. I want is church marketing really a biblical model? But but I digress. But churches market themselves. Now I have been making uh, some hypotheses about the future of the church and where the church is headed. And I have brought up some issues about kind of almost a, a, a cost analysis, right? Cost benefit analysis. And I often think about, I wonder how much money it takes to really operate a church for a year when you pay the salary, the building, the upkeep, all the material, uh, you know, insurance on the building. If you're paying off the building, property taxes, whatever, all the different things that you may have to do to keep that building operating, supplies, uh, if you're janitorial staff, whatever you're doing, how much does it cost per year to keep a church operating? just to operate. And then what is the actual benefit people gain from that building existing? How much time do people actually spend in the building? How much actual benefit, actual teaching are they getting from that building? And this becomes even a more, uh, a, a, a very important question in 2023 when people can for, forego a building, they don't even need to go to a building and they literally I mean, some of you are doing it right now. You're using your phone and you're listening to me sitting in a studio in Abilene, Texas. And we're going to talk, we're going to, well, I'm going to talk about church and I'm going to talk about theology. And, you know, who knows, maybe later tonight I'll do another episode and I'll do, we'll be doing episodes tomorrow and I'll be doing episodes Wednesday. And I mean, on a good day, I'm doing like four episodes. We're going to talk about sanctification, long gospel dispensationalism. We may talk about the book of Daniel and we may do something on the book of Mark, devotional message. You never know. I mean, we always are doing so many different things, right? And you get all of that and there's no cost of a building. I was, I was reading a, uh, an, uh, an article about the Mormon church and the billions of dollars, billions of do billions, billions of dollars. And when you think of any denomination, I don't care if it's a Presbyterian denomination, Lutheran, Missouri Synod, Southern Baptist, you name a denomination and just do a little research about how much money that denomination receives per year. Look at how much money the Catholic Church receives per year. And just think of all those billions and billions of dollars to keep it. And then you'll look at some of those denominations. Look to see, do they have a denominational headquarters? How many people do they employ? How much money does it take just to run the denominational headquarters? It's a business. There is marketing. There's marketing campaigns, marketing strategy, advertising. And I, and I have brought up a lot. What is the actual benefit? Because anyone who goes to church now probably can realize with an internet connection, either a phone, tablet, or a computer, you literally can get biblical teaching 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can get Hebrew, Greek, you can get all the church fathers, commentaries, systematic theologies. I mean, you, devotionals, you could literally drown in all of the biblical teaching available to you 24 seven without ever leaving your house. Without ever going, you could, you, you could buy a small desk, a small computer with an internet connection, a Bible, and about 30 notebooks and about 30 pencils, and you could just, you, you literally could just become the expert on all things theological and biblical. I mean, there is nothing stopping you other than your own dedication and discipline. And in many cases, you would probably get, getting more than you would going to church. So what is the benefit of those buildings? 
Now, we know right now we're going through what's called the great dechurching, and, and, and there's lots of debates about what's actually happening, why people are leaving, and there's, there's some people say these are myths, some people say no, this is accurate. I know there's a lot of debate, but we do know church attendance seems to be continuing to drop, 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 drop. So my thinking is, so where is the church headed? Well, did that billboard billboard signify where the church is headed? Because what they were advertising is, come to our church and you will not have to live life alone. And I don't think they were promoting Jesus. I think they were promoting, come to church and you can meet people. They were, they were promoting what we'll call the community aspect of church. And when you go to their website, the church is newhopeabilene.com. Please, by all means, go look at it. Newhopeabilene.com. There are big charismatic church in town. Newhopeabilene.com. This is newhopeabilene.com. And then look what they have right here. They have right here, we don't do life alone. We are not created to live life alone, but to be connected to one another. Connect to connecting connection to other believers helps us find our God. Now, now let me, I'm sorry, I had to stop right there. But let me just read this all again and not break this up where I shouldn't be breaking it up. But okay, all right, the whole thing is just crazy. So they show some people people holding, you know, obviously coffee cups, and they got little name tags, right? Because you know you got to go to church and you got to have coffee and you got to have name tags, right? Because everybody's got to get to know each other. Because you know, all right, okay, I know for the for those who are you know more you know. You're, you love that kind of a communal community aspect of it. You're like, well, that's beautiful and that's great. Some of us, maybe not so much, but okay. All right. So, but here we go. We don't do life alone. We were not created to live life alone, but to be connect, to be connected to one another. Connection to other believers help us find our God given potential and freedom. And it is where we will grow. See, when you go to church and you meet other people, you can find out your God-given potential. I guess you can't discover that without having drinking coffee with people in the church lobby. I don't know, okay? And, oh, I can find freedom. I guess I will find freedom by hanging out in the church lobby, drinking coffee, talking about the weather or the football game or whatever else. The grandkids, the weather, the new truck that someone has and everyone goes out and they pop the truck, they pop the hood and everyone looks at it going, oh, that's a truck. Okay. Whatever the case may be. All right. And it is where you, and it's where you will grow. Jesus shared his life with others. So should we, the best way to find connection at new hope is through groups. Let us find the right fit for you. We have a variety of unique groups, which all meet different at different times and have their own unique vibe. However, every group, you will find friendly people, hope-filled conversation, a time to pray for needs, and in most cases, really good food. Take a look at our current groups to see which one fits you best. So we're going to go to church so we can find a group so that we can meet with people. And then in many of these groups, you don't even meet in the church. (laughs) It's so crazy. I'm going to go to church to join a group so then we won't meet in the church, even though we're paying all of this money for the church. And nobody ever goes, I don't know if this is a cost effective use of our resources. We're spending money for the building. We're advertising to get people to the building. And then we're going to break them into groups so that they can go meet outside of the building. That we're paying for. <laughs> so is the new marketing strategy is church, the, the community aspects of church. Do you feel churches are now promoting the community aspect of church more than they are the teaching aspect? Are they promoting meet people, build relationships more than they're like, come learn doctrine, theology, and church history. Come, don't come listen to us exegete the text. Come and learn to learn, love and find other people and get involved in projects and community groups and, and whatever. Do you think, do you think that's the case? So I would just challenge you. And if you would like to do this, spend about 15, 20 minutes, just look at churches all over your city. Just look churches near you and just go from church website to church website to church website and see how they're marketing. Look for the way they're marketing themselves, looking at how they promote themselves. What is the marketing strategy of the majority of churches you can find? Is it come to our church and we are going to dive into the scripture? We're going to tear them apart. We are going to look at it. We're going to ask questions. We're going to struggle. We're going to learn. Or do they, or churches kind of like, I don't know if that's, that marketing strategy works anymore 
because people can like, why do I need you to teach me? I can learn all the doctrine, theology I want right here on my phone. Do you think a new marketing focus is emerging within the evangelical world? I'm not saying this billboard proves that. I just was somewhat taken back, like, don't live, you know, don't live life alone. And I'm like, okay, so what, what's this? Promote? And then when I realized it's New Hope, it's New Hope Church. So I'm going to go to church so that I can meet people so I don't have to live my life alone. And look at all those benefits you get by hanging out with people. I can find out my God-given potential because I can't do that without people. I can get freedom and then I can, I'll, I'll, I can grow. I can't grow without people. I, I could argue Christians are the f- number one thing to hinder your spiritual growth. Rarely do Christians help your spiritual growth. They're usually the ones hindering it. But, but, but I, but I, I digress. All right. I just want, I'm just going to throw this out there now. I'm, I, I could go on for 45 minutes, but I want you to think about all of that. Where, just in your estimation, how is church being marketed now? Do, do you, do you notice a, a shift? Do you notice something is changing? This is right now. This is not any scientific study, right? This is anecdotal at best. This is just personal experience. But I saw one sign and it made me think about this. I went to their website. I'm like, boom, they're really promoting this idea. I'm not saying there isn't other things on their website, but it seems to be that's the focus. You go look at your, your churches and tell me what you see. How, what's the marketing focus? See if you can be a savvy person and figure out what are they really promoting? What are they really driving at? Now they're going to tell you it's about Jesus because they got to they got to keep throwing in the Jesus thing. Um, okay, someone says they don't know if it's new or not, but I do think it's a common expectation of goers. So sure, it is marketed. See, I, that's weird. That, that's a, it's an expectation of people. I want I want community. I want people, and I. I just don't understand. Like, we're paying all this money for buildings so that we can meet people? I thought we're promoting, we're building these buildings so that we can worship God and learn and that the church is to equip saints so they're no longer tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Not that I made five friends. Now we have a cool little group that meets outside the church. <laughs> uh Okay, well, okay, someone says their church uh, their church background doesn't help. Yeah, their church background is probably like the church right here that I'm looking at, New Hope, because it's a Assemblies of God charismatic church. So, all right, there, I just want to throw this out. I just want to throw this out. Um, I, I want to do more with this. We will do more with this, um, but because I've got an article about de-churching, I got an article about billions of dollars in the Mormon church, billions. Like I saw that money, I'm like, billions of dollars going to, you know, I don't believe that they're a Christian denomination, but a, a church institute, a, a church denominational headquarters. And it's like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get all the money goes for all these buildings. And it seems like all we're really doing is trying to make relationships that are going to meet outside of the building and these little groups that really actually takes people away from the very building you're paying for. And then in those groups, you don't get any actual teaching because people, and you say, no, we do teaching. It's always a joke in my estimation. And not only that, it's really more to just meet friends and hang out and have some food. Now, if that's what you want, great. But why do we need churches for that? Why do we need churches to help you find friends? You say, well, I need Christian friends. Okay. Yeah, you, you can draw your own conclusions there. All right. Is this a new, where do you, wh- how is your churches marketing themselves currently in 2023? At the end of 2023, do you, what? just tell me what you see. You don't have to determine whether you think it's new or not new. What are you seeing? How are the churches marketing themselves? W- when you drive around town, if you see a church billboard advertising itself, I want a picture of it. News, if at yahoo.com. In fact, get... Get in your car now and just start driving around your town looking for church billboards, right? That's what, you, that's what you're supposed to do the rest of the night. Just, get, just tell, If your family say, what are you doing? I have to go drive around town and find church billboards. Why? Because that crazy guy on the podcast said I have to. Well, why do you have to listen to him? It's the Theology Central podcast. You would be a fool not to listen to him. Okay, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right. There you go. News, if at yahoo.com. News, if at yahoo.com. Hopefully, 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 
I can get something else accomplished tonight. But thank you for listening to this. I just wanted to share my experience coming back from the Abilene Airport. Where there's more rattlesnakes in the airport than there are people. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of hyperbole. Okay, but I wanted to tell you about the billboard and uh, get your thoughts. So email me your thoughts. Newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a great evening. God bless.